So what should Paul Ryan do? Stick around or hit the bricks. Let me go to my weather-treated party panel. Tonight, she's a correspondent for The Greg Gutfeld Show. Kat Timph is here, along with Reason.com associate editor Robbie Suave and Fox News contributor Rachel Campos Duffy. Uh, Rachel, I will start with you. <laughs> Obviously, uh, there are some heated words and a lot of emotion about P Speaker Ryan resigning. So should he leave right now, as some House Republicans have yeah, un unanimously and anonymously well, I absolutely agree with the, him to do. I absolutely agree with the congressman. I think that the last thing we need, with all the vitriol going on in, in Washington right now, um, the last thing the Republicans need is another reason to be divided. Yeah. Um, for I know you're not a big fan of Paul Ryan's, but say what you will. That the congressman Gates is a, is a big Freedom Caucus guy. He likes Paul Ryan. He's a unifying figure among, you know, between the factions, the establishment, the sort of middle of the road and the Freedom Caucus. He does keep them together. The last thing they need is people fighting for power and undermining each other to get a speakership. I think he's right. Uh, we had a congressman on last night, Thomas Massey, who said it was actually better under Boehner. And he never thought that he would say that because there's, there's not as much transparency and dialogue in Paul Ryan's house. So get him out of there. If he wants to leave, go ahead and quit. I'll tell you what I've heard rumblings. And mm -hmm. you know I have a little inside track yes, there. Yes, you do. What I hear people say is it's not Paul Ryan. People are not happy with his staff. I mean, yeah. a lot of times leadership staff thinks they are the members of Congress and they run things. And members who are elected by the people don't get the kind of say they want. So I think when we're looking at who the next speaker is going to be, I think that's something that members are really going to be and looking that's, at. And that's everyone's choice who they surround themselves with. And, and maybe he made sure. some bad choices. We'll just add that to the list. Oh, Kennedy. Yeah, I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> all right, so what do you think happens here? You know, I think the difference between a Ryan and a Boehner was that uh, Boehner, maybe there wasn't as much expectation that he was going to be this intellectual sort of force for, for limited government conservatism. But there for, was much more so with Ryan, was wasn't there? Ryan. He was supposed to be this Ayn Rand ideologue who wanted to you know, throw grandmothers off cliffs to constrain government, and <laughs> he didn't deliver on any of that at all. So it was such a huge a letdown that Republicans just continued to be this huge debt, big spending party under his leadership. Yeah. And that's Same why he's thing, so sad. only worse than some of the big spenders right. we've seen in the past. Right. And that's what's so disappointing because he's always considered himself to be, and I hate the phrase, a policy wonk. And he uh, he really proved himself. And that seems wrong. repudiated. Yeah. If, if he I is like promise me you'll get back to me on that one. I know it's Kat's turn, but I have to talk to you about that, Bill. Anyway, I liked Boehner because he cried a lot. He did. Very emotional. <laughs> yeah, I liked Especially that. with the Pope. He, I really like he that. People don't Pope. like that. I love it. That's yeah. for me. <laughs> I, I don't think it matters if Paul Ryan steps down or not. I think that the next person will probably be even worse. Yeah. They'll probably be even harsher on immigration. They'll probably even be bigger spending. Okay. They'll probably be more Trumpy. I don't. I don't love Paul Ryan, but I think it's going to get much worse with the next person. Right. I am a bit of an optimist. I, I just want to say about the bill, and I know that there's. I, I do believe that he is a fiscal conservative. I think what happened, and by the way, my husband, you know, also voted for the bill, and yep. he is a fiscal conservative as well. What happened is that bill had a lot of money for the military in it, and we're under very um, a critical juncture in terms of our negotiations with North Korea. Yeah. I would so argue in order to have, money here, in order here's, here's to have credibility about... in that in that yeah. negotiation, I, I unfortunately you have, have to, to have move on. That. But I, I will say this: uh, uh, Paul Ryan did. talking about being a. a spending cutter is like a, a vegan sitting down gorging on a plate of bacon. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the exact opposite thing and your actions Kennedy betray doesn't your lack see of the principle. intelligence reports that Paul Ryan sees and the negotiations going on with Oh, with so secret stuff makes him better. I'm Ooh, just saying yes. there is a very critical The more you don't know the, the number one Brought problem in the Nabisco. world is North Korea and I think that that vote had a lot to do with the military as it relates to the negotiations with North Korea and well, credibility you, in uh, those negotiations. Okay, so we should go ahead and spend a bunch of money because there's there's a list of secret things. Got it. Yeah, that's you uh, that's done that's, it and you that's have done to a get bang up job done. for us in the past. It's not an excuse. All right, I'm going to see the panel again just a little bit first up. President Trump now holding his war plans a little closer to the vest and keeping the Russians and Syrians on their toes a day after warning that the missiles were coming nice, new and smart. The president said there was one small catch. Tweet. Oh, the folks on The View have said a lot of stupid stuff over the years, but Joy Behar, well, she just upped the ante and dipped to a new low at the same time. Joy? 
gotten to the point in this world now where we have to rely on the sanity of Kim Jong-un and Putin over the president of the United States. <laughs> that's where we're at. My issue is the moral relativism saying. between someone like Kim Jong-un and Putin and President Trump. I think it's easy to sort of sit here and say that. But the reason why, why the why, Syrian... Why? You, think, you think Kim Jong-un is less moral think, than Trump? Do you? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I think Putin, the aiding and abetting of topic? Assad right now. On what topic? Chemical gassing of children. Last time I checked, America isn't doing that to anyone. Man, Behar is thick. She seems to have a mean case of liberal amnesia. She's conveniently forgetting Kim Jong-un's concentration camps and systematic rape, and that he executes senior officials he doesn't like with anti-aircraft guns. And then there's Putin. All he's guilty of is destabilizing an entire region by propping up Assad and a civil war that has killed half a million people. So why is Behar pushing this ridiculous comparison? Party panel is back. Kat Temp, Robbie Suave, and Rachel Campos Duffy. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit, Kat. I, I feel bad for Megan because she is truly outnumbered on that show. <laughs> yes. uh, meaning these are intellectual lightweights. They are complete morons, and they don't understand terms like moral relativism or equivocation or uh, the basic concept that in this country, when our president does something wrong, we can actually go out in the street and scream, I think the president's an idiot, and, and we're not going to get shot. Try that in North Korea or Russia. Right, and today, also, I ate food several <laughs> times. I did it yeah. several times <laughs> under President Trump, and there was plenty of food for me to eat, which is not so much a thing in North Korea, because yeah. he doesn't really let that happen. No, I think Joy I, Behar <laughs> should move to North Korea. I think she should try saying something negative about Kim Jong-un on North Korean state TV and see what the response is. Well, I thought is. at first when I watched this that she was doing the thing where she's a comedian, because mm -hmm. she's a comedian, sometimes she makes jokes, but she was actually being dead serious. So I just sat there with my mouth hanging open for a while and kept watching it yeah. over over. Oh, she wasn't joking. I just don't know how you could be that stupid. There's this right. long history of people on the left, right, making apologies for dictators who run other countries, yeah. the yeah. most despicable, vile Hugo Chavez type people, mm -hmm. and no matter how miserable the conditions are for the people there compared to how we have it here. So it was, it was more of the same of that. I mean, obviously, I, th I think no fair, credible person thinks Donald Trump is nearly as bad as any of those people, even if you do have and, and differences. You, you can hate you can, him. You, you can, can actually, you can, you can think he's the worst president ever right. in the history of the U.S. Union. But having said that, women in North Korean concentration camps are raped by guards, and then their babies are killed in front of them when they're born. Or they have forced abortions as well. I'll say this. It just proves that Joy Behar hates Trump more than she loves America and, frankly, the world. Barack Obama, when he uh, handed over the presidency to uh, uh, Donald Trump, said the one issue that keeps me up at night is North Korea. And whether you like Trump or not, the first thing he did was he said, what's the biggest problem we got? North Korea, I'll take that one. And he's he's dealing with it. Now, you might not li you might be a little nervous about the way he's dealing with it, but he's gotten farther than anybody else. Um, I respect that. And by the way, I hate when they compare him to a dictator because the entire uh, uh, administration, the entire agenda is about... Uh, giving up power of the government and money from the government back to the people. I mean, it's the opposite of a dictatorship, the Trump administration. Yes, that's um, true. Dictatorships tend to not deregulate. Right, or, or give you back your money right. or, yes, exactly. And, and the Trump foreign policy, I think we're still waiting to see really what it is going to be because, I mean, it's he has sometimes... a lot of different things. Right, sometimes he's dragged in, in certain directions like recently yeah. with Syria, but, you know, what he ran on, I, I agreed with, and I think time will tell, but it might be that, that his legacy might be more restrained in getting along with other people in a good way. Yeah. So we'll see. He seems so. to have a good gut instinct. It's just, I think he gets pulled in That's other directions by people around him. That's because it's delicious McDonald's. Mm. <laughs> I'm a fan. Should I say I'm loving it? Oh, there you go. I'm going to get a happy <laughs> that meal. That was good. <laughs> That's right. Happy meals for everyone. All right. Brought to you by. Uh, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank Rachel you. Robbie. Hugging <laughs> across the table. All right. Coming up, James Comey was fired by the president nearly a year ago. So why is he talking now? Because he's got a dumb book to sell. I'll take on that fame-hungry clown with Dennis Miller. There's Dennis. We'll talk next.